Hello, and welcome to another episode of Rhapsody. Today, I am speaking with a dear friend of mine, Simi. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Simi. I'm like Kendra's very close friend. And you know, we're going we're gonna to talk about very interesting things on this episode. So you should stick around. Yes, you should definitely stick around. And so I know in the last episode, I said that we were going to go see Barbie first because Barbie's on top, but we could not get <laughs> tickets to Barbie because apparently everyone's in a Barbie craze. So we went to go see Oppenheimer. Yeah. Rated R, we should not have been in there alone mm-hmm. because there was some... <sighs> There was there were some scenes that were showing a bit too much and so comfortably too. Like what were they doing? But you know it, it's it's okay because the movie was brilliant. No, it was. So yeah, it was it was really it was really good, right? Yeah, it was a really good movie. Like I, we really liked the beginning and the end. Middle got a little got a little boring, but that's okay. It was like it was very cinematic. The nudity though was crazy. Like they would just like they would show a lot of nude scenes, and I. I was not in the mood for that at 10 a.m. in the morning, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I think like the the just the scene where they were sitting in the chairs. Uh-uh. Like, give me your opinion on that. Um, like that one. So the thing is, I understand why they showed it at first because spoilers, by the way. This is gonna have spoilers. But yes. when um, Florence Pugh is, um, you know doing something to Cillian Murphy's character. We see yeah. Emily Blunt, right, or the current wife looking in, like, jealousy. And I feel like I kind of understand why that one was so explicit, because then we had to see. Yeah, that. and they were in the room, and she was, like, envisioning that as he was telling the people that were doing the trial thing. And she was just, like, <sighs> oh my getting God. on them. And it was, like, it was, it was good. Like, the imagery was good. But that whole scene where they were, like, talking, and they were both naked, and, like... Their relationship was so not okay, and especially I didn't like, like, it. Wh- like she had to like kill herself, and yes. just what was going on? And he was like so distraught by it. And then Emily Blunt, like she was like, "Get it together. What what is wrong with you?" Yeah, it was so like I feel like they had a very codependent relationship, and I, I yeah. just I didn't I didn't like it. Like I, I'm not saying like I didn't like the movie's portrayal of it because I think the movie is. Realistic. I don't know a lot about Oppenheimer, but that whole relationship, it was really messed up, especially especially because when, um, I forgot everyone's name in the movie, but when Same. Florence Pugh is like mad at Killian Murphy, the boys in the theater were laughing, they were like, ha ha, oh you women always getting like... <laughs> but it was kind of juicy though, like it, 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 it did juicy. make it juicy a little bit, you know? Yeah, it was juicy, but hearing a man laugh at it was like, oh, what's so funny, um, mister? Like, you need to be in Barbie, you need to get some feminist, feminist, <laughs> feminist, yeah, feminist energy with you, because like, what the hell? But I thought it was going to be way more depressing than it actually was. Yeah. Like, it was, like, I'm going to kill my neighbors why their children always banging (laughs) on the ceiling what the hell but anyways sidetrack um i thought the movie was gonna be way more depressing i thought they were gonna i don't know maybe talk more about the results and of the bomb and like that how it impacted oppenheimer and they did get to that but i did like the part after the bombing and they did like that whole trial and investigation on him like that was messed up he did so much for the country even though like it was an awful thing but he still did it for america but yet they treated him like some sort of villain yeah yeah like um yeah one very valid criticism i heard of it was that it didn't cover the effects on the japanese people a lot yeah and um I have an Instagram friend who loved the movie, and the friend's rebuttal was that, well, there are many co- movies covering the effects of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But my thing is, you can't exactly talk about the bombs without really kind of going into depth about how it affected the Japanese people, you know? Yeah, and I thought they might show some, like, visually grotesque things. Like, when he... One of the sequences I really liked in the movie was when he kept seeing the bomb in actuality even when it wasn't actually happening like he was just envisioning the effects of it and Mm -hmm. how the people's skin were kind of peeling off and when they were cheering and like the sound effects and how everything was quiet and then explosive and the light was beaming and it was this like blinding type of thing like like that was cool Mm -hmm. and that showed kind of the effects but not on the actual japanese people which is kind of like y'all y'all should do something with that yeah yeah so the movie was actually banned in japan which is yeah i understand i understand why 
Um, I like. I'm definitely excited to watch Barbie. I've, I wanted to watch Barbie the whole time, and we accidentally ended up becoming Oppenheimer girls before Barbie girls. And you know what? That's okay because it was a it was a very entertaining three hours. You yeah, know? definitely. I'm like I'm someone who cannot stand or like sit still for three hours. So in the middle, I, this is because I have ADHD, not because it got boring. I was about to fall asleep, not because it was boring, but because it was early in the morning. But towards, like, the end, it got so juicy, you know, and I just, I felt so bad for the wife, because that man treated her horribly. The wife was probably my favorite character, because she, she went through hell. Yeah, well, like, I think people said he's a womanizer, and I don't know, they showed kind of that aspect of it, Mm -hmm. but also, like, he seemed not awful. Like, I thought maybe it would be worse, like, the relationship. But she stuck by him. And in the end, like, she really supported him. Like, she came through. Like, she she was a real girl boss in that. Like, I thought she might just, like, leave him or something. She but she, she didn't. She stayed through. You know, my thing is, I think one reason that he comes off as not as a womanizer is because it's Killian Murphy. He's an amazing actor. But in real life, from what I know, he's, like, he's a devoted man. He's married... He's married to his wife, and they have a very age-appropriate relationship. So he's not really like that in real yeah. life, you know? So you can't... He's an amazing actor, but you can't really picture him as, like, a guy who, like, goes around and cheats on his yeah. wife. He's just doing his job. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is why I love Killian Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think, like, overall, they... Like, I don't know that much about Oppenheimer. Only from history this year have I learned, like, a good amount mm-hmm. about Oppenheimer and the Manhattan Project and stuff, but... They seem like they seem like they did a good job. Like Christopher Nolan ate the sub. Like he did like really good. Yeah, no, no, he he's a very good director. And something I don't like is when dude bros see good directors, they kind of gatekeep them and like I I don't know how to explain it. They gatekeep the directors and they they paint they paint them to be such serious people when they're not. It's pretty yeah. weird, but Christopher Nolan is very good. However, I am a Greta Gerwig girlie. Same, same, same. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm really excited for Barbie. I saw one big spoiler in the TikTok comment section. I'm like, dude, the movie came out like two days ago. What, what was the spoiler? You don't want to know. It's so big. Like, are you sure you want to know? Yeah. Ken is the villain. Ryan what? Gosling. Ken what? Is the, that's what someone in the TikTok section said. Like, he's like, he's a sweet boy, but then like apparently... Losing Barbie, like, turns him, like, uh, crazy. Oh, but that's not, like, his innate personality. Yeah, no, no, of course, I love him. My best my best friend said I would be a Ken instead of a Barbie. And it, it works, yeah. it works. But, you know, because I'm a, I'm a girl boss, you know, but if Ken was, like, a girl boss. I love Ryan Gosling. He's, yeah. he's also one of those men I like because he's not, like... He, He's not like Oppenheimer in the movie. Like, he doesn't go around cheating. He's in, like, a happy, age-appropriate relationship. And that's that's all I want from a man. Like, some men are so icky with their relationships. Yeah, I get that. I don't know. I feel like all the press that I've seen for Barbie, it just seems like such a good time. Like, it seems so fun. Like, Oppenheimer is so good, but, like, Barbie (laughs) is so fun, and that's what you want in a movie experience, Mm -hmm. but Oppenheimer was, like, good. Like, we're not undermining Oppenheimer at all. It it was very good, yeah. But Barbie is just, like, I'm just excited to see it. I don't know how long I can wait to see it. (laughs) Well, you're going to get to see European Barbie, which is crazy. You're going to have fun. And, um, I will... Barbie takes forever to get seats, so I may not even be able to watch till the end. But I don't mind. I'm I'm not one of those people who go watching on first date. Not dissing people who do, but like personally, like I just I like when the seats are available and stuff. Yeah, because it's gonna be out for a while, so there's no need to like rush into it. Mm -hmm. Like in our many years of living, I've never seen like a group of movies get this much attention. Like when I was. When I was younger, one of the first movies me and my sister watched on opening day was the Minions movie. And it was so good. But it was kind of before all the Minions hype, I guess. Yeah. Right? Amongst, like, teenagers. Because their Minion, Minions hype used to be amongst only younger kids. So there wasn't that many people going. It was really fun and stuff. So I'm not used to, like, the whole theater being packed. This wasn't even, like, this for Sonic, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah, the media definitely gave this a lot of attention. I think because it's a, like a lot of people making it a double feature, and it's these two really contrasting movies mm-hmm. with like two brilliant directors, mm-hmm. and it's just 
it's caused a lot of buzz, but it's fun. Like, this yeah. is good for Hollywood. Although, yeah. like, the writer's strike right now, yeah, like, horrible. should be getting more attention. And it's really mm-hmm. not. Like, I don't get it. And this is overshadowing that, definitely. But yeah. it's good for the industry, like, overall. But I hope it makes people, like, because think a little bit. This might be, like, sadly, this might be one of the last pieces of good content we get because of how writers and actors are being treated. And, you know, there was this kid in my class who was actually talking about this for one of his presentations, and it's a very, like, big thing. Like, do you watch Abbott Elementary? I love Abbott Elementary. I love him, Janine. It's literally me. (laughs) Anyway, so you know the janitor, right? Mm -hmm. He was showing his residual check, Mr. Johnson, on TikTok. He made... 0.03 0.03 cents after 300 days of working and he is like a he's a showstopper like or stealer whatever it's called like yeah yeah show stop i'm not that familiar with that term but you know what i mean whenever he comes on screen like he steals the attention he's so good yeah so it's like 0.0 even if he wasn't a good actor he deserves his money you know definitely so, yeah. yeah it's crazy um you know, and I don't think it's Barbie and Oppenheimer's intention to overshadow it, of course, no, you know? No. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but, like, I think it's a very sad thing. And the fact, like, people are trying to get, like, AI writers. AI- That's so stupid. Like, it's not the same. Mm-hmm. AI yeah. art is the worst thing because I love drawing, right? And AI art, like, always messes up the hands. You know, I, I do think that eventually people, people already hate AI, and eventually I think everyone will. Because it's literally coming for everything we love. If yeah, you like yeah. writing, AI is coming. It just can do everything. But it's not that authentic human mm-hmm. touch that it, like that people bring to their work. That AI just can't achieve that. So I don't think that's going to take over everything. But it's definitely like changing a lot of stuff. Yeah. And my neighbors are still <laughs> annoying us all. I don't, I don't get it. They need to go take a nap. But anyways. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really crazy. You know, like I just, I'm not a fan of it. And obviously there was always this kind of um before the strike came out there was always this sense of like you kind of knew what was happening but it wasn't revealed that the writers were treated well like it it was always there you know which really sucks because what would these amazing shows be without the writers and i think the actors are also being poorly treated so the actors too yeah yeah, like, we just need equity in Hollywood. And a lot of people say, oh, this is, like, for rich people. And they're, like, in this fancy industry. So, like, let's focus on the people that are working every day, blue-collar jobs. But, you know, they also work really hard. And they're mm-hmm. very influential people. Like, they make, like, all the people behind the scenes, they make our lives, like, interesting with television and movies and stuff. And they're a part of our everyday lives, even though we don't know who they are. So, like, we should be respecting them and they should be respected by the studio execs because it's ridiculous like Mm -hmm. it's it's just a big business that's like not made for the creatives it's made for the production companies it's like sucks yeah the studio executives are like i believe they're the only ones really making money from this which sucks you know like you come into this industry wanting to express your creativity and then you come out like being ruthlessly like i don't know like not even paid yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, things like that are sad. And yeah. like, I just like watching the movies. Mm-hmm. Like, going to see Oppenheimer, that was just like fun. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, they work so hard. Like, everyone works so hard. And this is like the culmination of all this work. And these are like brilliant projects. Yeah. And it's just like really, really nice to see like all these amazing movies. But yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, like pieces of art, they change our lives because, like, in a way, Life is a reflection of art. Like, everything, everywhere, all at once. Genius movie <laughs> yeah, genius. changed everything. From, like, every single piece of media changes our life. So yeah. it's, it's horrible that AI is yeah. being used. Like, like, I know it's fun to use AI filters, but that's the furthest I'll go. Because once you go down a slippery slope of using AI for writing and stuff, then it's like, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't like, want to give it. You're not going to get the authenticity. Like, in Oppenheimer, it was, like, it was real. Like, it felt so real. Mm-hmm. Like, every scene was kind of raw. And even though it was so clean cut and so well edited and so well written, it's still, like, the acting performances were so good. And it was just, like, really good. And I don't think AI could ever produce something that's close to that. But, like, what, what was your, like, favorite scene in Oppenheimer? Okay, well, it was certainly not the one where Miss Pugh, who I love, I adore. Yeah, this me is not, too, me too. Not a criticism on her, but it was certainly not the one where they meet. But I would have to say it's probably the... 
I like the end and the beginning. So honestly, it's the one where Einstein and um, yeah. Killian are talking. It's it's a very sweet scene. I've, I'm very fond of Einstein. I don't know too much about him, but he seemed like a nice, yeah. smart old guy, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will say, I think like the nudity, right? So there's like a big topic on um, if Hollywood needs nude scenes. And I'm like, so I don't think nudity should be completely erased. I think that's like too far. But yeah. sometimes like... I was like, was the nudity necessary, right? Yeah, I don't know. It made it feel like just something like, that's how people, like, after people are just, like, doing stuff with each other, that's kind yeah. of just, like, you can just be in your room naked, and it's not, like, a problem. It wasn't, like, that much of a sexual thing. Like, they weren't yeah. constantly like, having sex um. on screen. <laughs> they were just sitting. Yeah. And so it, it was, like, you kind of ignore the fact that they're naked after all because they're having a conversation. Stuff like that. I don't think, like, movies should be, like, porn films are, like, always, like, <laughs> doing that type of stuff. But that type of nudity, it just kind of makes it more real. You know, it does definitely you make it more real you know um the only time where i would definitely object to nudity is in the in the very famous case of um euphoria or as what happens with cassie how we repeatedly yeah. have to see that very young young adult or a teenage girl naked yeah it feels a little bit exploitative when it's young people uh-huh but yeah yeah especially because i believe sydney sweeney has talked about her discomfort with it you know she says like i don't like having that many scenes and the fact that she's portraying a high school girl you know i like they're not even in college i don't know why sam levinson just doesn't let the characters be in college because this is not what high schoolers live like you know like (laughs) yeah it's very like over dramatized it's very melodramatic like high school is not like that for most people no completely and another thing that someone has pointed out is that sam levinson only knows how to write experiences similar to himself and i completely agree because he baffles um not baffle what's the word like he doesn't work well with characters he can't see himself in yeah like um how many how many characters of color are there i believe one two three and then later on four right but um essentially i've heard many very valid complaints that Maddie is written completely to be like the quote-unquote spicy Latina trope and I completely agree. Yeah, me too. He doesn't really know where to go with her character and one of my complaints too is Kat doesn't know at all how to write like a plus size Brazilian character. She's like gorgeous, right? Her whole arc in season one is so messed up but at least she has the arc. Then in season two he reverses everything he does with her and just kind of messes up with the writing. Like, what I think he should do, focus on the cinematography. Cinematography. You focus on making things pretty. You get other writers because he's not a good writer. He's good with the cinematography, but that's... Yeah. That's his We gotta have an episode on Euphoria. Should we because... end the episode and do a second one on Euphoria? We could do that. We could do that. Because there's a lot to talk about. Euphoria. I'm not gonna lie. I haven't seen, like, all of Euphoria. I've seen, like... A few episodes of Euphoria. I gotta catch up, but I I don't have HBO Max anymore. Like I don't have Max, so yeah, I, I kinda, Max is like like no because I don't have cable anymore. So like I have to pay for it, and I just one when I get some money, I'll just get like a month mm-hmm. of it. Yeah. Why Why are they dropping things on the <laughs> ceiling? I don't get it. Like my my upstairs neighbors are doing way too much all the time. What, they're moving tables now. I don't understand this. But um, anyways, um, we're going to wrap it up for this episode. But we just wanted to tell you guys about Oppenheimer because it was really good. And we're going to both watch Barbie sometime in theaters. And yes. gonna, we're going to do an episode about that. We will give a review, but we hope our Oppenheimer and media talk was very interesting to you. We would definitely recommend it, especially if you're into, like, serious things like breaking bad and stuff oh my god breaking bad's the best yeah but do you want to talk about that next episode? <laughs> yeah we haven't talked about yeah that. we can talk about breaking bad not gonna lie i after like a few seasons like i skipped to the end because oh my god it got because, so long when they no yeah and i was just like i want to see if, if he dies like then that's it next episode we will uh, well you guys don't know our thoughts on it yet because we're yeah. gonna do that next episode and we might go over other tv shows because we have a tendency to we love TV. Yeah, we love TV. But um, if you love TV too, make sure to support your writers and actors. We are not from anywhere close to where the protests are. But if you are close, 
you know, give the writer some water, some Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, like yeah. show your support. But um, thank you for listening. Thank you. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this this was um, Rhapsody. Yay. Oh, and um, don't forget to share and follow. Yeah. And yeah. like the stuff. If you like our content, please give us feedback. Yes, bye. <laughs> bye.